So, as out of sheer coincidence, I happen to have an Irish story as well. And um, it starts, there are two protagonists at the start. There is an old lady, we'll have her a little bit bent over from all the work, and her young daughter who's still able to straighten up. And this, this mother and her daughter, this old widow and her daughter, they worked hard every day. Hmm? They would go out into their fields, they would dig their potato crop. I have a potato, yeah. Um, they dig their crop and they would mulch their fields, they would weed the potatoes, they would harvest the potatoes, and because they were poor, of course, they had no shoes. So their feet were covered in mud, caked in mud at the end of every day. And they, there was a ritual, they, they would come in to their house and in the porch, they would wash their feet in a tub of water and they were always very careful to throw the feet water out again at the end of the day so it wasn't inside the house the dirty water inside the house you don't want that <clears throat> but of course when you have a a magic taboo the story can't happen unless you break the taboo can it so one day they worked hard all day. It was one of the long June days, backbreaking work of weeding and mulching and all the other stuff, looking out for potato blight. You don't want that. And they came back, they bathed their feet and they left the muddy feet water downstairs in the single big living room before the old woman locked the door of the house with the key and then hung it up by its little bit of red ribbon over her bed when she went to bed. They mounted the stairs, they went to their beds, she hung the key up and they got under their covers and they fell into a sweet and well-deserved and dreamless sleep. If we were live, I'd be asking you for snoring noises now. You can do snoring noises in your own living room, I'm sure. Yes, yes. Mm. So, the night went on and they were awoken. There was something happening. There was some kind of movement outside the house. There was a shuffling. These were not quite human noises. And as they listened to this shuffling, shuffling round and round and round their locked house, there came a voice. Key, key, let us in. And then the really weird thing, the key spoke. The key that was hanging up from its little red ribbon from a hook over the woman's bedstead. <coughs> the key said, I can't let you in. I'm hanging up by a red ribbon over the old woman's bedstead. You'll have to get someone else to let you in. Well, that's a talking key. That's weird. Officially weird. But that wasn't the weirdest thing. Because next, that, that voice outside the house came again. Feet water. Feet water. Let us in. And they remembered the feet water. And downstairs, in the bucket, the water sloshed around and around, forming itself into a sort of reverse tornado going upwards and then bursting through the lock of the door and opening the door and leaving the house open and vulnerable to whatever it was outside that was now shuffling inside. And they heard these footsteps coming into the house. They heard people, things, sitting down. And they were lying in their beds, stiff and barely daring to breathe so that they didn't make any noise. Breathing with their mouths open. And only able to communicate by the movement of their eyes. And then the daughter, after minutes went by, the daughter thought, I can bear this no longer. I have got to do something. So she got out of bed and she started walking down that wooden 
stair ladder into the living room. And down in that living room, she saw four old people. She thought they might be two old men and two old women, but she wasn't sure because they all had beards. And they looked as though they were about 900 years old. And she realized that they were the, were they the she? Were they those other people, the ones that lived underneath the mountain, underneath Sleeve Namar, the mountain that loomed over that long village? Mm. And as she came down that little stair ladder, four pairs of eyes swiveled and fixed on her. And she froze. And carrying on was possibly the bravest thing she ever did. They were spinning. They they had helped themselves to the old woman's spinning wheel and the yarn. And they were busy spinning with their yarn. How dare they? And she looked at them and she said, with all that spinning, you'll be getting a thirst. You'll be wanting a cup of tea. I'll go and get some water. And she picked up the empty bucket and she walked out of the house towards the village well she could feel their eyes burning into her boring into between her shoulder blades but she carried on walking around the side of the house and then along the road she ran to the other end of the village where there was a wise woman a woman who perhaps had a black cat or three and that wise woman gave her advice and she walked back she came with a bucket of water as if from the well she came back towards the house at a stately pace and then looked up at the mountain and gasped and shouted out, Sleeve Namar, it's on fire! And she threw the water out of the bucket, left the bucket outside, and the, the four old things ran out of her house. She ran in, she shut and bolted the door, and her mother brought the key and they locked it again. And the things had ran out to see whether Sleeve Namar really was on fire. That was their home. That was the fairy mountain. They were saying, our babies, our babies. They're 900 years old. What are they doing with having babies? They looked at the mountain. It wasn't burning. They realized they'd been tricked. And they came shuffling back. Key, key, let us in. And the key replied, I'm tied up with a red ribbon and the old woman's holding on to me. I can't let you in. Feet water. Feet water. Let us in. And the feet water spoke from behind those old, old people. I can't let you in. I've let you in and once I'm lying in the mud in the yard. And those creatures walked round and round that house all night until dawn broke, but they couldn't find a way in. And that widow and her daughter never again forgot to throw the feet water out of the house before they went to bed. There you go.